Hey guys, Mike here. So I got a little green today, and so we had some continuation up. Wasn't sure if we were gonna get that, because sometimes the first move off FOMC is not the real move, but we did, nice little sell off in the afternoon. But the key was the fact the market was as green as it was without one of its major, major leaders, actually two of them, because some big news came out. And you know, we'll I'll get more into that in just a second, of course. And then we'll go over some stocks. And, and one thing that I will tell you. It will end up, if it happens, it will be like the call of the year, maybe the best call in the last 10 years. Who knows uh, if it works out because it's a major call on the market and stuff, especially one index. But I will start off with this right here. And that's this chart here where you see, you know, the S&P 500 financials, right? Looking great, right? So you look at that, you go, oh, great. Next to the left is wonderful. But then you look at the banks. Right? They're, you know, most of them are hot garbage, especially the regional banks, you know, not really doing much of anything. But the reason why financials or XLF is doing so well, if you might not know this, is because of what it's made up of, right? You got to look into these kind of things to understand, but most of them aren't banks, right? You got Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan is doing great, by the way. Visa, MasterCard, every, seems like every single day is either new 52 week hire, new all time hire, whatever. And then you keep going down here, BlackRock's in here, Morgan Stanley, right? chubb that's an interesting one and so you keep going through it and you go oh, okay now i see why it's doing well it's got the credit card companies things of that nature which of course is making a boatload of money right now off these higher interest rates and so that's why xlf is doing so well but when you look at the regional banks they look terrible right because they really need the rate cut and so if we get the rate cut and it's not leading to a recession you should see them start to do very well as, as bonds rise because remember that's why they're underwater right and so I just want to point that out. I get that question a lot. Now, the housing market. Some good news for the housing market, right? Housing completions, as I get this data in, I give it to you, right? Are as high as they were in 07. You can see these two uh, numbers over there. And so that's a good thing, right? They're building new homes. They're getting them complete and everything. They're coming on the market, okay? Which hopefully will raise the inventory up. We'll see how fast they get ate up. Then when you look at housing starts, this is a very surprising one. This is, this is a total flip here, right? So housing starts for single family units rose by 35%, while finally multifamily units fell by 35%. Remember we had talked about from 2020 upwards, uh, starting of 2023, that all you saw were these multifamily homes are trying to you know, make us into a renter's nation and stuff. So that finally flipped, which is actually a good thing. And so I just want to keep you guys updated on that. Now you might have noticed that Apple is extremely red today. It's rare that you see it down 4%. But it absolutely, in Apple's perspective, got crushed today. And what happened was, shockingly, they got sued by the Justice Department. Usually you see this kind of stuff in Europe, but supposedly they said, oh, they have a smartphone market monopoly going on. I cannot believe it. I mean, again, man, how many times have been railing about there's no such thing as monopolies in this country? But we'll see how far this goes. We'll see if they cut some checks to certain politicians and they put pressure on the Justice Department to leave them alone. But, you know, as you can see, they're not the only ones. Google, right? They were red for the day. Not quite as bad as Apple, but they had some different news. You can see they're basically just consolidating right there for the last four days. The EU Commission reportedly opened new investigations on Apple and Alphabet. So Apple's getting basically hit from both sides of the pond here. And so, you know, when you look at Google again, it's just consolidating. You go to the hourly, that's kind of what's happening right there. Maybe it fills that gap. Watch 143.25. But again, these two have heavy weights in the s p and the qqq and the fact that the market was actually up a half percent over one percent at one point in time is pretty amazing and just remember this right here guys and guys before we continue please hit that like button it really helps people find the video and think about subscribing if you like a finance channel who does not try to talk over your head we are still in this uptrend right here and this channel that's been going on since december and so that's why i even added it to the morning news brief i'm on weekly uptrends daily even hourly right that channel still matters. We got to the top of the channel and rejected off of it. Okay, started to sell down some. You know, maybe after this huge move up we took yesterday, maybe we'll get a little breather or come down, consolidate, fill one of those gaps, maybe fill a fair value gap. That would be really nice. I know what I personally would love to see is this thing, of course, has been on this meteoric rise, which was crazy when you look on a weekly because of all the green candles. 
But what I would personally love to see is it to come back, come back down and retest 5200, right? That would be a big, nice bounce area for it because if it fails, obviously it's not going to be good for bulls. But, you know, when you, when you look at what this is, I mean, I always like to say it doesn't look very normal, does it? But it is what it is. I mean, look at all those green candles. What is that? Three red candles amongst all of those right there. And this is a weekly chart, not a daily chart. So hopefully we get to come back down at some point in time. Test the 5200 out. Just keep that one in mind. It's a big round number. It's a big psychological uh, area to look for as well. And when you look over what was really going today, IWM. You know, once again, huge day for this one, right? And we know where it's heading. It's heading back up to 210 where it wants to get to. Can it make it through it? That's what we're going to have to see. Obviously, the moving average is all pointing up. Momentum's behind it with, you know, the rate cuts per se. You see the bullish MACD cross on the daily right there trying to form right now. But 210 is a hard level, right? It's a very hard level to get through. It's only less than 1% away. But when we pull out here on the weekly, and I personally am one of those guys, I don't like the rocket ship moves. I'd rather just come down, consolidate, fill some gaps, you know, uh, mitigate some of those fair value gaps or something like that because that's just the way I like something to move. But we're, we seem to be on all these rocket ship moves lately. And small caps are the most rate sensitive. So I'd love to come back down, test the 2023 high as well at some point in time, move up. Because you can see this move ahead of it, if it gets through 210, right, you want support below because that's going to be a beast to get through that right there. All right. It's going to be a bit, you can see it on the volume profile, it's in that gap so we can move up. But once you start hitting like 215 ish, somewhere in there, then you know it's going to be tough sledding and that's why i say tom lee will have the call of the decade if this actually plays out again we, we talked about the russell 2000 big day today small caps appear to be all in are you all in on small caps uh we are i mean our our view is that small caps are on a relative value basis back to where they were in 99 which was a launch point uh in 99 for a 12 year outperformance period i think that means with the Fed doing a dovish pause and CEOs getting more confident and that means M&A and IPOs and people looking at other sectors, I do think the Russell can rise 50% this year. So the Russell 2000 basically getting to the Russell, you know, to 3000 as a, as a price level. And so that will definitely be interesting to see if that happens. Let me know if you think that's going to happen, but I will say this, this is the annual percentage change of the Russell 2000 versus the S&P. And what do you see here? Four years in a row, the S&P has outperformed the Russell. But if you look, you have to go all the way back to the dot-com bubble right for it to see that happening with five years in a row. But more importantly, what I want you to look at is look at the last, let's say, 11 years. The Russell has only outperformed the SPY in two of those years, one handily, one barely. So that tells you a lot of money has shifted away from the Russell because, remember, one-third of them don't make any money. A lot, it's just a lot of trash companies in there. And then when they do start performing and doing really well, they get moved off the Russell. Right. And so and then here comes another small cap company. It's just tougher for them. They have to carry on a lot of debt. Right. It's when a high interest rate environment is tough. But and so if we get one more year, it's going to be like right before the dot com bubble. So maybe, you know, contrary to indicator or something, maybe we finally get the Russell to outperform it. But it's just really, really tough right now. So keep an eye on that. Now, some certain stocks here. Watch Shopify. Right. It's got this little range right here. And we're going to pull up the MACD and stuff. And as I was saying, you want it to cross that zero line, right? To come up and cross fully through it. That's when you usually get a decent move. We had a big move yesterday, red day to day as it came back down. But again, you either get this mover comes up, flops over, or it just starts kind of grinding its way up right here. Once the MACD crosses that zero line, because that means bulls are starting to try to take back over. Okay. And again, you see that range. I'm going to go and pull up the RSI real quick as well, because we're over the 50 on the RSI. So the bulls are trying to take back control and push this thing up and get back the momentum because this used to be a high flyer for sure. But you can see in that range right there, anywhere from 71.45 to 81.45, right? It's like a $10 range right there that has been consolidating in since November of last year. Okay. And it had one big move out of it, failed attempt, came back down. So watch this one closely for a breakout or we'll get to see if it consolidates more. But you can see I mean, this still has, it's, I'm not saying it's ever going to get back to its all-time high, but it is way off, obviously, as you can see. And so that is a really, really pivotal level, uh, the $90 area right there up above it. And so as you can see on the volume profile, right around 95.38 is actually uh, going to be some big resistance, actually 93, really. And below it, you're starting to form because it formed that consolidation around that. It's like 71, $72 mark. So pay attention to Shopify here. Also looking over here, 
at PayPal, right? It broke above that level we had talked about. Obviously, I have this wedge right here. Big gap still above right there. But you can see the MACD is well above the zero now. So the bulls are definitely trying to take back charge on this one right here, or take charge on this, I should say, excuse me. And so if this continuous push up, once we get past like 67 right there, that little big red candle right there, then I think it's going to fill that gap pretty fit fast. And then, of course, if you look at the other levels, you can see them right there playing as day. Some people get project 90 by the end of the year, but it's, it's going to take a minute. But the big thing to look for, none of that's going to happen until you actually see the golden cross on the 50 and 100, right? It has not happened yet. If you look right here, you can see it's very close to happening right there on the daily. And when it happens, that's usually a bullish thing for most stocks. As we scroll back, it's been a long, long time since this has actually happened. And so you can see it happened right there. Obviously it had a really good move up there. Uh, happened here as well. Nice move up from it there. And so, you know, that's a bullish thing normal in the 50 cross to the 200 and stuff. So pay close, close attention to that right there. Again, it has been a while since it has happened. Now, as far as economic data, all you got is Fed speakers tomorrow. And so once again, I hope you got something out of that. I will not be doing a video tomorrow, but I will be setting up Saturday's videos to put any questions in the comments that you want as my neighbor starts to pressure wash. So it looks like his windows and stuff. Sorry about the noise. And so uh, and then we'll do Sunday's video to set up next week as well and stuff. So please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. And I'll see you guys on Saturday.